Hey guys, in this episode, I'm gonna talk about my most recent build. It's an AR-10 chambered in 308. All right, guys, here it is. It's the AR-10 chambered in 762 NATO or 308. Uh, this is my AR-10. Some people call it the AR-308. I am so excited to finally have this rifle complete. It has gone through so many changes since I initially wanted an AR-10 build. Uh, I originally wanted a long range precision rifle. I'm not really sure why, where I live, the longest range I have anywhere near me is 100 yards. So anything beyond that is just not something I can do where I live. Now in the future, I do plan to travel a little bit further out to uh, find something with maybe 500 yards. But even then, a 16 inch barrel on the 308 is plenty for that. So uh, while I wanted an 18 inch, I ended up having to settle for a 16 inch because the company waited about five weeks to tell me that the 18 inch was not in stock when, when I ordered it, they said it was in stock. So uh, once I found that out, I ended up taking the Luth AR uh, precision stock off of it, which you might remember from a previous video, I ordered uh, basically a bunch of Magpul flat dark earth furniture for it, but I'll get more into that. And I'll also get into uh, just some of the internals, the, the, the optic and whatnot. But I ended up uh, getting this, this gun and it had a black lower and upper receiver and a black handguard. Uh, I immediately Cerakoted the handguard into a flat dark earth. Uh, it was a Cerakote's uh, flat dark earth Magpul. And um, I didn't care for it. Um, I just, I, I, I already have a rifle that kind of looks like that. So I really wanted something unique, something that not a lot of people have. And I came across a rifle that had this brown, mostly brown, uh, upper, lower handguard with um, flat dark earth furniture. And I thought it looked amazing. So I went ahead and decided to do that. I, this is the Patriot Brown by Cerakote. Uh, I have switched from gun coat to Cerakote. Uh, and this is the Air Dry. Um, and I am thoroughly impressed with it. So uh, without further ado, let's bring you in a little bit closer and give you some details about the rifle. All right, guys. So here it is. Here's the AR-10 chambered in 308. I'm going to go over um, everything about this rifle, starting from the bottom all the way up to the top. And I'm going to give you some detailed information about this rifle. And um, I can't see what I'm filming again. So uh, please forgive me if something kind of goes off camera for a minute. But um, I've had a lot of people mention that they think I should do more close-ups. So again, I, I am trying to uh, do that for you guys. So what we've got here, starting at the bottom, we've got the hex mags. Uh, I get these from Gun Mag Warehouse. Um, the only complaint that I have about them is that on the uh, AR-10s, they may be 20 round or even 10 round capacity. Uh, you have to take one round out or it will not load, the magazine will not load uh, into the lower receiver. It just will not. If you take one uh, round out of the magazine, it loads just fine. So uh, that's my only complaint on that. But I will say the uh, flat dark earth color, as you can see, matches so well with the uh, Magpul. So I will give them a huge uh, shout out for that because there are so many times you order flat dark earth and I think Magpul is kind of the standard, right? I think everyone has some sort of Magpul furniture. So getting everything to kind of look the same uh, for me is really important. I'm kind of weird about that actually, but um, you know, whatever. So uh, next part we'll talk about is this here. This is the Magpul K2 grip. I have this on another build that I showed you my 300 blackout and I have it on the AR 10 and a half pistol. Um, I love this. Uh, grip. Uh, this is the grip that I had on it initially, uh, as you can see here, and it has a much steeper angle to it. And it also had these finger grooves, which I didn't like. Uh, it was black in my last video. However, I Cerakoted it in uh, uh, flat dark earth, the Magpul color. Um, and I don't think it's that close, to be honest with you. I think it's uh, far off enough that um, when you put two parts together, they just look like they came from uh, two completely different companies. And uh, I know that's a minor complaint, but uh, you know, for me, I kind of like things to look as, as close as possible. Uh, also up here, we've got the Magpul vertical grip in flat dark earth. And I just love the way this all looks together. Uh, moving up, we've got the Aero Precision's M5 lower. Uh, I love Aero Precision's lowers. I think they are the best. 
uh, of all of the companies out there. You know, I haven't tried a ton. I'm sure there are some really uh, high priced ones that might be a little bit better with features, but for me, the quality of this lower is amazing. I love the uh, additional adjustment in there to remove some of the slop that you get in uh, Armalite rifles. So um, inside of that lower is just an Aero Precision's lower part kit, parts kit. And that is actually what was included was that uh, other grip that I just showed you. Um, but in the end, I ended up not using it. So in here is just pretty much mil-spec Aero Precision's uh, lower parts kit. Uh, Moving on back here on the back of the lower receiver, uh, I've just got a Magpul STR stock. So this one actually has the storage uh, units on each side and I really love the cheek weld. It's also um, adjustable. So you have, uh, I believe, let's see, anyway, like five positions or six positions adjustable here. And um, I love this stock. I, I own uh, some, SB Tacticals, I own some other Magpuls, and I really, really do in like, like how this feels uh, when I put it up to my eye. Um, I just love the way the cheek weld feels, and uh, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of this stock here. It was a little hard to find, uh, but I did end up finding one um, online. All right, moving up a little bit more, we've got the upper receiver. Uh, this upper receiver, the barrel, and the handguard came from a company called tactical skeleton and um, I had a lot of I had a lot of problems and it, you I mentioned about the 18 inch barrel that's what I originally wanted uh, they said it was in stock and would be shipping you know in four weeks after four weeks uh, of reaching out multiple times they told me that they actually didn't have the 18 inch barrel in stock which oddly enough they still show in stock on their website uh, so I ended up selling for the 16 inches which which is what changed this whole rifle from a precision rifle to a battle rifle. Honestly, now I am so happy that that happened because I like this so much more than I think I would a precision rifle. So anyway, uh, you've got a M-Lock handguard up here. Uh, we've got a one in 10 twist 16 inch heavy barrel. So it is a little heavy on the front end, um, but it, I wouldn't say it's um, uh, you know unweighted a lot. It's a little bit more front heavy, but that's okay. It's, it's not bad. Um, and then I will give them credit where credit is due. The uh, charging handle that I saw on their website looked like a standard mil spec charging handle, uh, not ambidextrous, um, but it came with this one. I also bought the nitride bolt carrier group and um, I love this uh, charging handle. So this, this right here, I think they actually did a, a really great job on. I was also supposed to, my dust cover is supposed to say 308 win for Winchester, um, but they did not send that either. So uh, this is just a standard uh, dust cover here. And then, uh, let's see, off the front. So this here is uh, amazing. This is the uh, VG6 um, muzzle brake here, and it's the 762. Uh, I was gonna get the one that was about, what was the other one? Uh, I can't remember what the other one was called. It's a little more expensive. And when you fire it, it's self-tightening. Uh, however, this one does have the crush washer in it and um, it is a great, great muzzle. It is super loud, super loud, but um, definitely helps with the recoil with the way the vents are all set up on, on this uh, muzzle brake. All right, so moving up, this here is actually by Monstrum Tactical. When I um, first bought it, it's a cantilever uh, scope mount. I bought one for a different scope that I had. It was uh, the one inch mount and it was um, flat dark earth from them. And again, I, I hate to be that way, but I like things to look, you know, like they go together. The, um, their scope mount was almost like a greenish color. It was like uh, they dripped a little bit of OD green inside of their flat dark earth paint when they painted it. Um, but, um, so I ended up shipping that back. Um, I bought the black one for the, I think it's the 30 millimeter scope rings and I actually um, Cerakoted it in the Magpul Flat Dark Earth. Uh, mounted up there is the Vortex Crossfire 2 Hog Hunter. Um, this scope is incredible. This huge 56 up here, three by 12, it lets in a ton of light. Even in low light situations, you get a ton of light out of this scope. Uh, I am a huge fan and um, I really enjoy it. The only thing I don't like is right here, you'll notice that it has this, uh, these numbers here. 
essentially you have to know how far your target is away. So if it's a uh, 60 yards, you got to adjust this here to 60 yards. And then let's say you have it set there and then a deer or a hog or something walks up on you 10 yards. Now you got to crank this back down to 10 uh, to make it where the, uh, this is what puts it in focus. So I've never had that on a scope before. It's taking a little bit of time to get used to, but uh, nonetheless, super bright scope. It actually has, it has an LED um, reticle inside, which is pretty awesome. So if you can use that or not use it, whatever you want. And then this here was kind of an afterthought. Um, I ended up buying a, um, another scope for my AR 10 and a half pistol build. So I had this, uh, hollow sun just kind of sitting around. Um, I bought a 45 degree Picatinny adapter. I put that on here after I Cerakoted it, Patriot Brown as well, and stuck this scope on it. And for me, um, I've been in a situation before where I've been out hunting and uh, we could hear a hog running through the bushes next to us, uh, making all sorts of noises. And you know, even on a three scope, uh, it would have been really difficult to uh, be effective. So this would allow me quick uh, access to shoot something that's that's close to me. So in the event that a, a hog came running up and I wasn't um, you know fully ready, I could throw up and use my red dot here to uh, lay down fire. So um, that right there is is it, guys. This again, I don't know if I mentioned it, so I'll mention it again. This is the Cerakote Patriot Brown. Uh, I did all the Cerakote work myself, um, and I think it turned out awesome. This is the um, air cure stuff, not the oven stuff. I have an oven, but um, I want to give the air cure a go and I absolutely love it. It's been a few days and it looks incredible. So I'll bring you back up top and we'll finish out this video. All right, guys, back up top. And that was my AR-10 build. I hope you guys like that. If you guys have any comments, don't forget to leave them in the comment section below. Like and subscribe, guys. This channel is growing a lot faster and a lot greater than I ever thought it would. To be honest with you, getting 100 subscribers, to me, I thought it was going to be a feat. And we are passing well over 200 subscribers now, which I know in the grand scheme of YouTube isn't much, but for me, it's amazing, guys. So I really appreciate you liking, commenting, subscribing, and um you know it's really made this channel grow a lot so if you guys again have any i've gotten a couple requests some people have talked about ammo i guess that's one thing i'll just kind of throw out there as a little piece of information for you uh, i have stocked up on so much ammo recently and i'm not hoarding it i'm only collecting what i need and then enough you know just so i have uh in case it gets worse i have some to still be able to go to the range uh, but my success has been uh, Academy Sports. I can't tell you guys enough. I'm not sure what it is, but every time I go in there, I'm able to buy a nine millimeter, five, five, six, um, and more recently, I got some 308 Winchester. So, um, you know, go in there, stop at your local academy. I suggest early Monday mornings. If you can get in there early enough, about 30 minutes to an hour before the open, get in line and uh, you, you should get some nine millimeter. I, I don't know if that works with every academy, but for me, it's worked so far every single week. Um, to be honest with you, I've stopped going because now I can go on Thursdays and I'll find 556. Five, so it doesn't matter. I just kind of go whenever, just swing by Academy and they are my success story. So um, again, guys, thank you for everything. I really do appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this video. And on that note, I'm out.